tales come full circle now as we're back with Black Veil Brides. So the birth of my channel, which was... I have no idea when the hell I started, but... Uh, pretty much my first, if not one of my first videos, was this band doing their uh, fifth album. Which uh, I wasn't into. Um, so, yeah. Um, I had, like, zero bloody subscribers. I was just starting. All I could do was record my face and that was it. With their terrible quality and everything. Uh, since then... Um, I've gotten better formats and better editing. I've got um, um, a mic. I um, have 25 subscribers at the minute. Um, still not a lot, but um, it's obviously increased from zero. So obviously some people are subscribing. I've had um, thousands of views, um, not all together, but on just one-off uh, videos. I've had over a thousand views on uh, some videos, which is awesome. Um, I've had um, a fair few bands actually communicate with me. I've had um, one band actually talk to me um, um, do an um, interview with them and uh, they sent me um, a signed copy of their album. I've never had anything signed um, by a band before and um, that is just amazing. Like um, Music has been my life for so long so it's amazing now that I'm kind of just with Black Veil Brides again and it's uh, kind of just come full circle because um, Black Veil Brides kind of started off this channel so anyway who really fucking cares to be honest um, so Black Veil Brides uh, for people who have just kind of clicked into this and not seen anything about me previously uh, I used to be a pretty hardcore Black Veil Brides band like my favourite band is Event Sevenfold and then my second favourite band was either Alter Bridge or Black Veil Brides coming third. I thought they were a fantastic band. Um, I was there for the uh, one and only music video of Knives and Pens and I thought it was a pretty good song. When Wretched and... Um, not Wretched and Divine, uh, We Stitch These Wounds actually came out. Uh, I downloaded it immediately, their release. Um, did not like it, the production sucked, uh, the vocals suck, uh, the screaming sucked. Um, the screaming did not fit into uh, the people um, actually doing the music. None of them are inspired or like screamo bands, so it was really out of place for them. And uh, later on, um, the lead vocalist said he only did that because he was so young, his voice was breaking, so um, he couldn't sing in multitude of ranges because his voice would break, so he had to be monotone in order to keep it in pitch, and then it was so boring he decided to add screaming. But uh, yeah, he's not really a fan of screams. None of the band members are. They're fans of old school. And uh, old school, you don't really have screamo. So um, yeah, shit album. Uh, poor production. Crap screaming that uh, the band wasn't really into. I'm not into that. Uh, vocals beyond awful. Um, Set the World on Fire, um, which uh, came out like a year later. So Rex, um, why do I keep saying Wretched and Vine? Uh, we Stitch These Wounds was 2010. Following year was Set the World on Fire, which... Um, I kind of really liked, um, there was some uh, good guitar work on the album, um, some uh, great solos, um, Andy the vocalist um, definitely improved, it was good to see that, uh, there was way less screaming, it was only like screaming in one or two tracks and that was it and only just a little uh, portion of it. Um, all the lyrics on that was all about um, being an outcast, um, being hopeful, um, being uh, better than uh, the people who knock you down. And this was um, in a time when I just kind of left um, high school and I was beyond bullied. I had a really, really hard time and a really hard life. So having um, optimistic lyrics about all of this for an entire album's worth... Um, Every track, therefore, kind of just spoke to me, and I just kind of felt comforted by this band, so I really got attached to them and uh, cling to them. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Uh, I went to see them live for the uh, Rebels EP. Wretched and Divine was a concept album, which I kind of thought at that uh, time was uh, really, really genius, that they kind of did a story and everything. And musically, it was a lot more kind of versatile than what set the world on fire. Um, was doing uh, there was a lot more kind of range of um, styles and stuff and stuff going on the uh, solos um, got better they weren't just to focus on shred like the previous stuff there was more musical solos in there and melodies 
and his voice yet again improved. Um, so it was great again just to see his voice is getting constantly getting better. So that was a great album. I got the deluxe. I got the bonus tracks. I got the documentary. I saw the um film that uh, came um alongside that um went in and showed the story of the Wretched and Divine. Uh, BVB four I got. I enjoyed that album as well. And um, then I kind of started my channel. Um, I was obviously getting quite old at that point. I was up in my twenties, um, maturing, um, and finding new music. So their latest release, whatever the bloody hell it was, uh, Veil, wasn't it? Um, I wasn't really keen on Veil. Was basically just like BVB Four and Wretched and Divine kind of mixed together. There was nothing new about it. BBB4 was like old school, heavier kind of um, rock, and then Wretched and Divine was this concept that uh, had a more of a focus on melody, set the world on fire, was like power, um, glam metal style of stuff. So um, they kept changing, uh, Andy's voice kept changing from album to album, constantly getting better. So it was good to kind of get the variation, but with this it was just like a carbon copy, and their songs are usually around three minutes. And they are very simplistic in structure. Um, the lead guitarist, um, I've forgotten his name, Jake. Um, all he really does is shred. So his solos are pretty much uh, just carbon copies of each solo. Um, there's not a lot of diversity um, or versatility with that. Um, Andy's voice has kind of hit his point of um, it gets it's as good as it's going to get now. He's uh, kind of come into his voice, he knows what he's doing, so you don't really um, see the improvement there. And there's nothing new. Um, structure, you just got, get your intro, your verse, your chorus, and that is it until you get to a solo. And yeah, nothing ever changes. A verse never changes, a chorus never kind of evolves. Uh, the final chorus, and uh, nothing ever really changes. It's incredibly basic. So I I didn't like that album. Um, I obviously got a live and burning the live DVD, so I'm just telling you this to basically show I was a massive hardcore Black Veil Brides fan. They were my third, if not maybe second favorite band at time. I got all the albums apart from the first and uh, the new one, uh, Veil. I got the live DVD. I saw them live for the Rebels um, EP. I had um, Set the World on Fire t-shirt, um, Wretched and Divine shirt. I loved the band. Um, I watched all the um, Brian Stars interview with Blackville Brides. All the fans are going to know this because they were um, like amazing interviews because uh, Andy was hilarious. I watched Andy with his cousin doing them kind of short, um, funny episode um, things that um, Blackville Bride fans are going to know. I was a bloody fan. A hardcore one, kind of. And I fought people when they bullied Black Veil Brides for wearing all the black um, eyeliner makeup and everything, saying they're a bunch of uh, drags and girls. And I kind of said, well, that's fresh metal. That's just the way it is. In the old days, um, Iron Maiden wore all these tight um, bloody um, jumpsuit clothes and everything, just like they did. Um, Event sampled in the early days wore uh, eyeliner and uh, nail polish. So did Bullet back in the day. So... That's just the way uh, music was, so I don't know. And it's not like they wear it all the time. That is not them. It's a stage uh, look, so I had to go at everyone. So I even defended them. But anyway, to make this not be long, what do I think of The Night? So what The Night basically is, if they've just released two songs. So it is basically an EP, and looking at an interview with uh, the band... Andy was pretty much kind of stating that um, they're just going to kind of release um, two songs at the end of the year and then next summer th there'll be another release and then another release later. I hope that doesn't mean all that band's going to be doing is just releasing four songs a year because that is a better format because that is bloody awful. Or if they're going to release two here and then two there and then two there and then put it into an overall album... Again, this sometimes doesn't work. There's um, Sal Dweller who um, releases tracks whenever he finishes them. And then um, nearer the completion, he'll hold them off and just add them to the album. But it basically means what you have is songs you have heard on repeat over and over and over again. So you kind of skip through these tracks in order to hear the new tracks. And then when you do listen to them in full, you're a bit kind of fatigued with the songs that have been heard. 
and you're not so much on the new stuff, therefore kind of crippling the overall album. So again, that is a problem, and I don't like that. So I'm hoping this is a, like a one-off thing, and then later they just do this. I hope it's not just a constant thing. It's just like, we'll do two songs, and then we'll work on the album, and then every now and then we'll um, keep releasing new music just in between things happening. That is what they should be doing. So in the summer next year, a new album, don't have these two tracks on it, have everything completely new and fresh, great. And then the next summer, like an EP like this, then uh, following summer, an actual album. That's the way I would do it, but I, I don't know. He didn't really explain it overly well. The overall kind of concept of the night is kind of going back to the early roots of um, We Stitch These Wounds, so where they've got the really biker leather jackets back with their kind of chains and uh, the kind of face paint and everything and eyeliner and stuff, black lipstick. So they've really gone back to them style of days um, with just basically better production and, um, you know, um, not really screams. So uh, one of the tracks, The Vengeance, uh, is 3 minutes 47. So Again, it's basically just the very most bare-bone formula. The intro itself, um, Jake um, does um, leads through the intro underneath, um, I mean over the top of uh, Jinx, uh, just doing rhythm. So you get a pretty technical kind of lead, which um, gives you kind of a good energy and stuff. The actual verse, I kind of really like it. Andy has a really unique voice. I really like Andy's uh, voice. And it has such a great kind of flow in this uh, verse and everything. And I really like the sound of it and the instruments, uh, the guitars have this really thick um, sound and everything, which I think just kind of helps it be heavy and bulky and uh, have a great kind of rhythm and heaviness about it. I really kind of like um, the verse. It's nothing too special. I just am kind of nostalgic on Black Bell Brides. So I love the fact that I'm hearing Andy's voice again and the band. And it's basic, there's not much really going on. It's a very um, short verse with not much going on. I just appreciate it because it is catchy, it's got energy and it has fun. And I really like Andy's voice and it's nostalgic to me. But if it's not nostalgic to you or anything like that, it is very, very basic. You may appreciate Andy's voice if it's the type of thing you're into. I think it depends on uh, who you are, if you appreciate Andy's voice or not, because it is quite unique. And you'll probably appreciate the kind of heaviness about it over other kind of BVB tracks. But overall, you're going to find it very simplistic. There's nothing special or, you know, anything to jump out about it. So there's no real purpose to really be invested in this. The chorus is a problem with BVB where they always open the chorus up and Andy always kind of uh, lingers on each word. So he'll um, say a line just, hey now and he just constantly hangs on it and it's like every chorus and then there's a lot of choruses where he has gang vocals so it's like because bvb is quite well known for this where every chorus they always open it up and andy usually is hanging on every word and projecting it and then there's usually gang vocals which bvb do a hell of a lot it becomes quite repetitious and you get fatigued of it and it becomes predictable and there's nothing new, there's nothing exciting, there's nothing fresh, therefore it's bland and it's boring. So yeah, the chorus is pretty bland and boring and there's nothing new or special about it. It goes back into the verse which obviously has that kind of thick and heaviness about it and I like Andy's vocals over the top, I really... Like that, so getting back into the verse, again, quite great. The solo um, is basically just a shred fest. Like, um, Jake is a fast player. It's technical, I guess, but there's nothing musical about it. There's no kind of source. There's no holds on anything. There's no variation. He's just kind of speeds, and there's some dual elements which are lacking um, this really nice uh, warm tone to it. So the solo is pretty pathetic. But other than that, it is a very bare bone basic song um, that I personally just think has 
a strong um, energetic kind of intro the verse um is very kind of catchy and uh, has some fun about it and i really like andy's voice for the reasons i've explained the other track saints of the blood um has an even faster intro with more intensity like it's complete shred so it, that is technically a better intro from the vengeance as for the verse um it's not as good as um the vengeance uh saints of uh, the bloods verse um it's a bit kind of lighter it's not as thick and um heavy and dark in tone um and his voice doesn't have as good a kind of flow and rhythm about it um before the chorus hits, um, he does the odd kind of scream, so he kind of builds it so it's just the kind of gnarliness and then he'll just kind of scream a certain word. Again, Andy actually has a very unique scream. Screams are quite predictable where it's like the guttural or the really high sh pitch shrieking and every band who do scream will sound exactly the same. But in all honesty, um, Andy Biersack's uh, screams do actually have a quite unique kind of sound about it so uh just the odd kind of word from him and everything is like i really kind of appreciate it because it just adds some new kind of elements just um changes things up a little bit um it is a very unique style of scream as well so it is quite refreshing over just the typical kind of screams that you hear all the time that all sound exactly the same as each other um, the chorus um again it's opened up and things and there's gang vocals so it's quite bland. There's a section of the uh, chorus where um, they actually get it into a bit more of a galloping um, pace and things. And Andy uh, doesn't actually linger on his words as per usual. The, hey, yeah, uh, you know, just it's really irritating when that is all he bloody does for the majority of their choruses. So when it gets into the bit more of a gallop and there's a bit more kind of flow to him, it's like I'm kind of more enjoying this. It's a bit more kind of energetic instead of just kind of slowing down and just being bare bone basics and complete carbon ripoffs of Blackville Bride's choruses over five fucking albums. Uh, chorus again and um, riff again. No change because BBB don't really do that. They're not that much of an advanced band. Solo, technical. Um... I think there's a duel um, again between uh, Jinx and Jake. And then they finish on the chorus, and that is basically it. Um, so, wrapping this up uh, quickly, um, Saints of the Blood is 4 minutes 27. It's relatively short. And The Vengeance is 3 minutes 47, which is relatively short. All BVBR is usually songs of three minutes, if not four minutes. They never really get into five or six. It's a band that doesn't do much um, with song structure and song writing. Uh, their structure is always, you have an intro, you have your verse, you have your chorus, carbon copy it constantly until you get to a solo. Uh, we may put a small little bridge in there, and that is it. It is incredibly basic. It is what you would get out of pop artists who um, obviously don't play any kind of instruments. They don't have great kind of lyrical writing or much to progress a song and keep it constantly shifting and evolving in order to uh, make the length that much longer. BVB are not that good of songwriters and um, are not that good with structure in order to do that. I know on the Veil album there was a song that was actually eight minutes, which I was very excited for, but they kind of cheated it. They had a mass section um, which was just instrumental of nothing really happening, as well as um, some kind of like spoken um, stuff at the end that dragged, which added the minutes, but it was just speaking. And the actual song, what you got, was around probably three, four minutes. So it was typical BVB, but they cheated their way to get it to eight minutes. So it it was pretty piss poor, to be honest, in a cheat. In order to say we've done an eight minute epic, bollocks, did you? You um completely fucked it and tried cheating your way through that. So yeah, um, what what what's great about it? The vengeance. I kind of like the verse. It's a fun, energetic verse. I like Andy's voice, it's nostalgic to me and I think it's a good sounding voice. Um, but that's just me. As for uh, others, uh, what have you got? 
You've got something which is incredibly basic, incredibly bland. It doesn't do anything new or inventive. There's not a lot of versatility here. There's not a lot of range. Songs don't progress into something. It doesn't surprise you anywhere. There's nothing big and epic. There's no um, amazing guitar solos that have a great range and versatility about them. It's the very simplistic, just it's a catchy song that is fun for someone who doesn't really want anything special in their music besides just something catchy and fun. And that is it. It's incredibly short. It is probably for an audience of teenagers and kids. That is where the audience is. For people who are actually older and more mature, um, who have bigger attention spans and things, um, I think people like that would probably need a bit more out of this. Because technically BVB, um, their songwriting and structure and everything is pretty much exactly the same as what you would get in Nickelback or Shinedown or Papa Roach, Paramore, Blink-182, all them basic bands. The only thing BVB does better than that is basically the vocalist is better. They actually do have a technical guitarist, although he's a one-trick pony. He's not versatile at all, apart from when he did Wretched and Divine. And it's heavier. Other than that, um, there's nothing to differentiate this band from billions of others out there. The only thing that makes these guys more special is uh, the guys of the band are actually legit um, nice and uh, fun and friendly. Um, uh, Andy has a really unique, strong voice, which I really like. Um, um, other than that, there's not really much to them. Um, so, yeah, the audience is pretty much just for the teens and uh, children with short attention spans who want something just kind of basic, just to kind of have fun in school with something short, simple, something you can easily sing along to and something catchy. But for people who want some really big, long uh, songs with a really um, interesting, musical, mature solo, you're not going to get anything like that. Um, riff... Um, you know, um, different verses and different riffs and different choruses, just song evolution and song progression or um, individual song progression at least. It's just not going to happen here, guys. So rating this, it is just a 5 out of 10. It's average. You've got a good voice. Uh, you have solos in both. Uh, you have shred um, intros. You have a shred solo. Uh, the solos do uh, have um, a decent length to them. Um, the stuff is kind of catchy and everything, so there's nothing drastically awful about it. It's just there's nothing special in the slightest or unique to kind of make this band stick out from the crowd. There's nothing special about it, I'm afraid. So it's just average, um, these tracks, to be honest. Um, you list, I listen to it, uh... I get nostalgic from um, my previous love of the band and uh, hearing Andy. I enjoy hearing Andy from time to time. And um, I'm glad I heard the songs. I had a good time with them. But um, there's no reason for me to listen to them again. There's nothing to really do with them. So, yeah. And that is it, I'm afraid, for uh, BVB until the next one. Um, sorry, this took a little long um so i'll just leave it there i have you get on with your uh, day and i'll see everyone in the next video